Ta da! All right, thank you guys for coming out today. The theme of the, or the title of the puppet show is Aladdin's Magic Lamp. So I got my friends right here. And, oh, Sir Winston, nice to see you again. This is Sir Winston up here. He's going to help me. He's going to be our narrator for the story today. Sir Winston, thank you again. And let's get started. Mm -hmm. It's going to be good. Why, hello, everybody. My name is, like he said, Sir Winston, and I shall be your humble narrator for today. Now, are you ready to hear the story that I have prepared for you? Yes. Yeah. Now, our story is about a boy named Aladdin. <laughs> Once upon a time in the fabled city of Smarxland, the distant province of Turkestan, a young boy named Aladdin lived with his mother. Now, Aladdin was a poor man, but he was also rather lazy and his mother had to nag him about finding work so that, so that they would have money to buy food to eat. But Aladdin was in the marketplace one day, and a stranger offered him a well-paying job if he, all he could do was his bidding without raising any questions. Aladdin accepted the job, not knowing what the stranger that he was really an evil magician who was searching for a secret treasure nearby. He led Aladdin to the entrance of a cave and told him to enter the cave and search for a lamp that would that he had left there earlier. Aladdin saw many boxes and jewels, uh, and he started to stuff his pockets with all the jewels he could find. When he found the lamp, Aladdin headed back to the man, but when the magician demanded the lamp, Aladdin refused to hand it over. For disobeying his order, the magician used his magic to close the cave. Aladdin remained in the cave for two days and was about to give up on escaping when he accidentally rubbed the side of the lamp. Suddenly, a large dragon appeared beside him. <laughs> Who are you and what do you want from me? I am the dragon of the lamp. <laughs> and while you possess this lamp, your wish is my command. Oh, dragon, I am only a poor man named Aladdin, and I have only one wish to get out of this cave. Can you please help me? That I can do. Where would you like me to take you, master? I'd like to go home, please. <laughs> Done. And instantly, Aladdin found himself in his own home with his mother. His mother complained to Aladdin that there was no food or money in the house since he had left. When his mother wasn't looking, Aladdin rubbed the lamp again. I am here, master. What is it you wish now? I wish to have some food for our table and some money for the other needs. As you desire, sire. Thank you, dragon. This will do nicely. And the dragon left behind trays of food and bags of money. Enough for I quite some time. Here. And after a while, however, Aladdin's mother began to nag her son about getting a job so he could find a wife and start a family. That started Aladdin thinking. I wonder, yes, I, I think I, I'll make another wish. I'll, I'll rub the lamp again. Yes, master, what is your wish today? I would like to have a lovely woman as my wife, as well as all the riches that we would need for a good life together. Hmm, well, certainly, Master. What type of wife do you desire? Well, if, if I can have any woman, 
I would choose the lovely daughter of the Sultan as my future wife. Well, that certainly is aiming high. It is difficult, but it's not impossible. The Sultan is a greedy man. What do you, what you must do first is to offer some very expensive gifts so that he will recognize your name. I will have a box of fine jewels and chocolates sent to the Sultan in your name. The Sultan accepted his gifts but made it known in a note that he required 40 baskets served with precious stones before he could consider Aladdin as a suitor. Wow. Once again, Aladdin decided to rub the lamp. Here it goes. Yes, master. I have a note back from the Sultan that I must now provide him with 40 baskets of jewels before I can marry his princess, the princess. I will see to it. And the genie arranged for the delivery of the jewels to the sultan. When the sultan received the jewels, he was convinced that Aladdin was very, very rich. So he gave him permission to marry his daughter. It is done as you wish, master. Now I must prepare you to meet the Sultan at the palace. I will clothe you in the finest golden robes and conjure up a fine horse for you to ride to the palace. When I am through, no one would ever recognize you as the son of a tailor. I will also build you and your bride a fine home, the finest home, even as fine as the Sultan's palace. Maybe even finer. All went well for Aladdin and his beautiful bride, and they wanted for nothing. One day, however, the evil magician heard the stories about a rich man called Aladdin, <clears throat> and then he realized that Aladdin must have escaped from the cave with a magic lamp. The magician was determined to have the lamp for himself, and went to Aladdin's home disguised as a beggar woman. When Aladdin was out hunting, he asked Aladdin's wife if she could spare any of the old lamps in the house that they no longer needed. Not knowing that it was the magic lamp, the princess gave the magician Aladdin's lamp. When Aladdin returned home, he learned of this and was very upset. Oh, what will I do? I must find my lamp and my dragon. I will ask my wife to invite the magician to our home so that I may steal the lamp back and have to put her a, I have to put a sleeping potion in his tea. And so Aladdin asked his wife to invite the magician to tea. The princess put a potion in the drink and Aladdin was able to steal back mm -hmm. his lamp. I will rub the lamp at once. Oh, I hope you come back. Yes, master. How may I help you? First, please make sure that the evil magician will disappear. And then I wish you to I wish you to come make our wedded life as happy as it was before the magician ever came. It will be as you wish. In fact, I will give you one gift without even asking for it. What was that one gift, you may ask? The genie's gift was, the dragon's gift was that Aladdin and his princess would live, live happily ever after. For them, for, together for many years, raising a large, happy, virtuous family. Aladdin never again lost track of the wonderful lamp. It was that Aladdin, it was all that Aladdin needed. These days, the dragon often comes out from the lamp, not just for work, now he comes to attend, to attend family parties and as the honored guest. You see now, Aladdin and his princess are able to make their own good fortune together and all by themselves. Thank you. Thank you all for attending. Thank you, Sir Winston, for narrating this. I am forever in your debt. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.